best-selling book, The Mind-Body Solution, Train Your Brain for Permanent Weight Loss. AJ was recently in inducted into the Personal Trainer Hall of Fame, and he's a keynote speaker at high-end entrepreneurial and personal development events. He's the host of the popular podcast, The Online Super Coach. Along with inspiring the lives of the general public, he's dedicated to helping coaches create an ethical and profitable online income through his business mentorship program available at OnlineSuperCoach.com. If you find, want to find out more about AJ and everything he's doing, you can go over to www.OnlineSuperCoach.com. Welcome to the Create Your Own Life podcast, AJ Mirzad. Jeremy, thanks for having me, buddy. Absolutely, brother. I, I, for the audience that doesn't know this, I saw you speak recently at the Ultimate Sage Experience, um, and I wasn't super familiar um, with your story outside of your podcast. And man, you have an amazing story. Yeah, thank you. I'm just grateful to be here and grateful to share my story with you. Absolutely, man. So, so let's start there. You know, tell us what your story is, man. Yeah. So, wow. How far back do we go? But essentially, yeah, I grew whatever up. Whatever feels right to you. <laughs> as a chubby kid who uh, struggled with his weight, struggled with his, you know, confidence for the most part. Uh, at the, my heaviest, I was 60 pounds overweight, and I had it all: chipmunk cheeks, man boobs, the whole nine yards. And for me. I struggled on really wanting to improve myself and what helped me tremendously was fitness and fitness allowed me to lose the 60 pounds, gain new confidence and become a new man. So that got me into starting my own fitness business. It was in the early 2000s and uh, that has since evolved into an online coaching business and now my main company, Online Super Coach, I help personal trainers and coaches scale their online businesses. Very cool, man. And and you had a very trying life experience along the way there. So I, I'd love to share that with the audience as it was super impactful for me, man. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, when you're getting into bettering yourself, you tend to do things sometimes to self-sabotage. I really feel like uh, a lot of times in our life, we have this new identity, this new person that we want to become. And what ends up happening is there's an old identity that pulls us back. And I think that's what kind of happened when I was trying to really grow my business and become a better person. I had a horrible experience with an overdose that actually put me into a coma for one week. And this was in 2006. It was oh the most difficult thing that I ever went through. And um, what it did was uh, it, it, it taught me how to live. You know, it's kind of weird, but like, when you're so close to death, you truly feel alive. And I feel like that specific incident occurred so that I could feel alive and be more grateful for every single breath. I feel like I was given a second lease and coming out of that, that's where I started making big changes in my life. I got rid of toxic friends. I started reading books, hiring mentors and just up leveling, becoming a better person. And uh, sometimes you look back on certain things and, and you soon understand why they happened the way it did. Let me ask you, man, like, like based on that experience, it sounds like you just kind of had a total, you know, life turnaround, but looking at that experience, you know, what is the biggest takeaway for you? And it sounds like you're almost grateful for parts of it. Absolutely. You know, even though I was at the time a personal trainer, healthy in an exterior, I was destroying my interior because I was partying a lot. You know, I had friends who were very toxic friends. They're called enablers and I was doing a lot of drugs drinking a lot of alcohol, and not really taking care of myself. And I feel like if I would have stayed on the path I was at before my near-death experience, I would have a totally different life. It wouldn't be as good as it is now because that experience made me realize, well, life is short, you know? And if I would have died on that day, I would not have left any type of legacy. So it was like, what can I do to make the rest of my life the best of my life, you know? And that's when I started my business and now I've been running it, you know, it's, it's like uh, 11 years a business owner, being an entrepreneur, you know, having full control of my destiny, being able to serve so many more people. I was working a nine to five job at the time and I feel like the near death experience allowed me to, to expand, you know, cause um, it's a powerful exercise. I suggest everyone do this is to really just meditate on your mortality. Imagine if you were called in by your doctor and Go in and he says, yeah, I need you to have a seat. I have some terrible news for you, but you have six months to live. In the next six months, you're gonna have vibrant health, energy, you're gonna be just as good as you are now, but you're gonna drop dead 
six months from now. In that wow. moment, right, you need to start thinking like, am I living the life that I want to live? Am I do, doing everything that I want to do? What, what do I need to change? Who do I need to be around? You know, so it, it's a great exercise to do, but it's not just six months, but it's the rest of your life that you can start making those changes. Absolutely. And I'm sure a lot of a lot of people that are entrepreneurs and their coaches are, are listening to what you're saying, AJ, and they're they're saying, you know, I, I haven't had an event like he did, but I do really want to change my life and what I'm doing. You know, take take us back to the, the decisions you made when you really, you know, made that change. And if, if somebody listening is looking to make that change, what should they be looking at? Yeah, absolutely. So Tony Robbins has a phenomenal line. He says, success leaves clues, you know? So Every single thing that you want to do in life, someone has already done. So it's really looking at specific role models, having mentors that will help you guide you know, the way a lot faster as opposed to trying to figure it out yourself through trial and error. Someone is already doing what you want to do. So if you're in a financial position, hire a mentor, hire someone who has the life that you want. If you don't have the finances, then read books. Immerse yourself with the knowledge of, of people that are successful. Think like them, act like them, speak like them, and soon you will become. Mm. Very cool. And for you, like, where did you seek your first mentorship? Because I think for a lot of people, they're, they're kind of confused, man. There's a lot of people out there to choose from. How do you know like, who's the right person to work with that's going to take you in the right direction? Yeah, absolutely. So when I first got on my uh, whole personal development journey, I was reading so many books and watching videos on YouTube and immersing myself in this world of inspiration, personal development, motivation. And I was on this crazy high. I'm like, holy cow, I could change my thoughts and I could be more positive and, and be happier, more optimistic, be more productive. And I remember like I was reading these books and the people seemed so cool. So I just started to email them and get in contact with them. And I realized that they didn't have a lot of time for me. You know, I, I, I was very naive at the time and I would email someone and say, hey, can I pick your brain? You know, no response back. Hey, can I take you out to coffee sometime? Can I give you a call? And it was like, no, 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 of course not. You know, <laughs> what type of value am I going to add? I'm going to suck all their precious knowledge out of them. And it wasn't until I hired my first coach, that's when everything changed. Because I realized you got to pay to play. And at the time, the coach was, was pretty pricey. You know, I was making a lot of money, but the guy was charging $5,000 for a year of coaching. And I remember just like putting my, my credit card into the shopping cart. I was like shivering, so scared, because I'm like, what, what if I lose this money? What if he scams me? What if I don't follow through, you know? But I just remember after I did that, that night I couldn't sleep. I was sitting up at the ceiling, so nervous, like they make the right decision, that I screw up. But I realized that, you know, I was reading all these books watching all these videos, but I was not getting where I wanted to go. But I found that nervous, excited feeling of hiring my first coach is exactly what I needed. Because from that first coaching call, my entire life changed. He said, you know, AJ, you're a smart guy, but you learn too much, you're an analysis paralysis. I'm gonna give you three things to do for the next week. You do these three things and get back to me. Let me know what happens. So he just like simplified my life. I had all this information, I was so overwhelmed. I did these three action steps, and within weeks, I started making more money, started getting more clients, felt more confident, started getting traction. And then every week, we'd have these uh, coaching calls, and in a short amount of time, I made my, my money back, the $5,000, but also I was in a place where I was like learning the power of action. Because before, I was studying and reading, and it was an analysis paralysis, now I was actually taking action and making progress. Very cool. And, and I think the, the, the interesting thing is you work with a lot of coaches, man. Like, what is the thing that, that you say see holds a lot of them back? Like, what's the biggest thing that stops them from really getting to, to having what they want? You know, I think it's uh, the same issue that I had, the overconsumption of information. You know, we're in the information age, man. There's so much knowledge out there. But if you're just always learning and you're not implementing, you're going to overwhelm yourself, you know? So I feel like people lack the balance because they think it's, for me right now, I'm like 50-50, um, 50% intake, 50% outtake. So I learn and I apply, learn and I apply and I move along a lot faster. So many people 
get into this perfectionist mindset of wanting to know it all. I cannot build a website until everything is dialed in. I cannot launch a course until I have all the things I need. I can't do a video until I lose 10 pounds, like whatever this nonsense <laughs> is, right? Right. Imperfect action, like Ebony says, is really about being in a place where you don't have to have all the answers, just take the first step. I think it was Martin Luther King has a phenomenal quote, he goes, you know, don't wait for the entire staircase to appear, take the first step and the next one will be shown to you. And I think that's the biggest thing that I've learned and I feel like a lot of coaches are in this constant learning, 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 you know? But you know, Jeremy, I think really, really comes down to it. It comes down to fear, you know? Because I think we all know what we need to do. And I get so many messages, people slide in my DMs and they're like, AJ, you know, how do I get to six figures? AJ, how do I get new clients? I'm in a sales slump, what do I do, you know? What's advice you give me? And I used to give a lot of advice, but I realized that most people don't implement, you know, because if you don't pay, you don't pay attention. So what did I say? I said, you know what? Put your hand on your heart. What do you think you need to do? Most people know exactly what they need to do, but they're stuck in fear, right? Because most people know that they're marketing themselves, put out some videos, reach out to old clients, mark, you know, there's so many things you could do. People know exactly what to do, but because of fear, they hold back. I, th I think that's huge, man. And and like when you're when you're kind of staring fear down, I think it has a tendency to stop us. And a lot of listeners to this show know that I'm always talking about taking action is so important because I'm a huge believer, AJ, in that done is better than perfect. Because yes. I don't care if I have typos, man. I'll get them later. It's out there. You know who I am. You're able to work with me. You're able to buy from me. And I think that's first and foremost the most important thing. Exactly. Exactly. You know. Uh, well, well, I think. Uh, 80% is good enough, you know, because the people that right, go for 100% right. sit on their asses and analyze all day long. Well, that's what uh, Grant Cardone likes to talk about his, his, first, his first book, which was Seller Be Sold. And he got a, a letter from somebody that read the book that said, you know, there's, it was like a hundred and something misspellings in this word. And he looks at him and goes, I don't care. I'm a New York Times bestseller. I'll fix it in the edits, man. And Thanks. I think that's one of the biggest things is perfect stops you, man. And, and perfect is just a way of feeding the fear. 100%, 100%, right? Because like, there's no such thing as perfect, to be quite honest, right? Like, right. you could spend 10 years on a book to write the perfect book, or you could pump out an imperfect book every year and write 10 books, you know? What do you think is gonna go viral? What book do you think is gonna become a bestseller and, and change people's lives? You know, the person who writes 10 books, you know? Um, obviously, if you're, you're constantly waiting and, and, and try to perfect the process, you're gonna waste a lot of time. Absolutely. So let's let's kind of get back to your business growth, man. Like, if you had to look at everything, you made the decision, you built the business you wanted, but what allowed you to scale? Because I think a lot of people that are listening to this, you know, they have a business, they're making some money, but they're like, you know, how do I get to that next level, man? What did scaling look like for you? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, the, name, the name of my company is Online Super Coach, and I firmly believe that everyone has a superpower, an amazing skill that only they can do. It gives them energy, creativity, focus, and they could be the best in the world in that superpower. So the key element in scaling is spending all of your time in that superpower, right? Right now I'm in my superpower, I'm talking to you, I'm live, I'm just having a great time. I don't know what time it is, what day it is, I lost track of that because I'm so immersed in <laughs> doing this, right? Right. And then all the other stuff that I do just makes me tired, so whatever makes you tired, do three things. You want to automate, delegate, and eliminate. So there's amazing apps and softwares that you could automate daily activities, right? You could start to delegate certain tasks to key people, people that love doing the stuff that makes you tired, and then finally eliminate, you know? And I have this um, for all my students, and I do a lot of seminars, we take some time to write out a not-do list because we do so much on a daily basis and a lot of stuff is crap. It's not really giving us high leverage results. So start seeing the things that you do not need to do and look for people that you could delegate those other elements to because the more you see in your superpower, the faster you scale. How have you been able to determine that? Because I think for a lot of people, they, they don't quite know what that is. Like self-awareness isn't quite there. And I, I know for me, what I'm good at is sometimes I'm not always good at delegating that. So how do you determine your superpower? 
Yeah, absolutely. So essentially, you got to think about the things you do on a weekly basis. And uh, here's a great exercise that I recommend for you and everyone else that's listening is on a Monday, start a weekly tracker and literally track your entire week in 30 minute increments. Let's say you wake up on Monday at 7 a.m. What do you do? 7 a.m., 7.30, 8 a.m., 8.30, all of your waking hours and see where you're spending your time and energy. And now look at your activities and look at which ones just light you up, put you in a zone of passion. Which activities would you do if you didn't get paid for it, right? If I put a billion dollars in your bank, how would you spend your waking hours? How would you serve people? How would you add value? Again, you're also looking at the things that make you tired, right? Are you answering emails? Are you scrolling on social media? Are you cleaning, right? Like all these right. things. <laughs> so one is to become self-aware with how you're utilizing your time. Two is look at the activities that raise your energy and the activities that lower your energy, okay? So that's something mm -hmm. you do yourself. The second thing is what I have all my students do when they start my program is to email 10 people that's the closest to you and simply ask them, hey, Jeremy, I really respect your point of view. I was asked a question, what is my superpower? Since you know me well, what do you feel my superpower is? And the people that are nice enough to answer, you'll start to see patterns. You'll see certain keywords that come up when people describe your superpower and why they want to be around you, why they hire you. So the clues are out there, you know? Like I said, one is looking at your own activities. Two is asking others, perhaps you're blind to certain things that you do that inspire others. Very cool. Well, AJ, I want to come back to you as the entrepreneur. And I know one of the things I'm always really interested in is how people start their day, because I feel like that has so much of an effect of how that day is going to go. So do you have um, like a morning ritual or, or a certain way you start your day every day? Absolutely. I never, ever, ever miss my morning ritual. So, so what does that look like for you? Yeah, absolutely. So let's talk about today. Today, I got up, I, I, I wake up kind of late. You know, they always say, oh, you know, the 5 a.m. club, blah, blah, blah. You know, some, <laughs> some days I wake up at eight, nine o'clock, you know? I love staying right. up late at night, man. I'm a night owl. So I think I got up around 7.30 this morning. The first thing that I do as soon as I wake up is I do a 100 count breathing exercise. So I just breathe in through my nose, breathe out through my mouth. Inhale, exhale, one. Inhale, exhale, two, and I just count to 100. That takes about two minutes, but it centers me for the day and also lets me know if my body needs more sleep. If I don't need sleep, I'm good to go, okay? The second thing, I have a journal right next to my bed. I write inside my journal. Typically, I will record what happened throughout the day. If I had some interesting dreams or insights, as soon as I wake up, I capture them. Journaling is super important. Next thing I do is I start to get ready. So I'll take a shower, brush my teeth, shave, and as I'm getting ready, I listen to some inspirational audio. So I'll go on YouTube or my Audible account and I'll listen to some great inspiration, uh, capturing some knowledge to start off the day, even a podcast. After that, I head to the gym. And what I do when I go to the gym is I, is I create content. So I'm a big believer in creating content. So I was in my car, uh, letting it warm up and allowing the pre-workout to kick in and I did a Facebook Live. So I'll go on Facebook Live, create a piece of content, add value to the world. And then as I'm driving, I use this great software called CopyTalk. It's a mobile transcription service where you basically call up this phone number, you talk into it, and your voice turns into text. So for my emails, blog posts, my next book, I'm creating content. So I'm a turtle typer. I'm super slow when it comes to that. So when I talk, I could generate a lot more content. Creating videos and talking like I'm doing now just is easy for me work out, do cardio, and then I finally get back and then I start to check my emails, uh, have coaching calls, come on awesome podcasts like this. But essentially how I describe that morning is pretty much every single day of my life. I love it. I've never heard of copy talk before. I feel like, I feel like we have a, a new app I'm gonna have to add to the show notes, Nat, man. Great snack there. Yeah, copy talk is amazing. I've been using it uh, for about seven years now, you know? It's wow. like It's an like, it's unlimited transcription service. So it's not like a computer, 
where you're basically talking to a machine. It's actually a room full of typists. I think it's based in Florida. It's a warehouse of 400 typists that are typing every single word. It's super duper accurate. So basically you could even give them commands like, okay, make a list or hey, I, I want you to write an email or a letter and they format it so that you don't have to edit it, right? That's the, that's the biggest thing. So let's say if I have to write a long ass letter to someone, I will talk it, they'll address it. If I make a to-do list for my assistant, they do that as well. And the cool thing is, is they give you the uh, transcription, the text, but they also give you the audio. So I like to repurpose the content. You know, if I have a podcast, sometimes I'll just call it in a copy talk and then boom, I got the audio and the transcript. Very cool. Well, well, for you, AJ, what do you believe your biggest skill set is and how do you feel like you developed that, man? Absolutely. My biggest skill set is to inspire people into action. And I learned this early on when I was a personal trainer. You know, I had this amazing propensity to get my clients results. You know, being a fat kid, I had empathy for people that were overweight and couldn't control their nutrition. So I was in a place where I could really get into people's hearts and get them off their asses to follow the diet and exercise, right? And then once I transitioned into business coaching, I was inspiring my clients in action, you know, getting them to put out videos, create amazing high value content, sell their services, serve at the highest level. Uh, in fact, I, I did a, a great interview with my uh, student, Darren Steen. You know, yesterday he had a huge win. He made $25,000 in three weeks. Wow. More than he made in five years of, of online training prior, you know? It's a very powerful story. 52-year-old man from Chicago. And, uh, you know, he just started online training because he doesn't want to be an 80-year-old personal trainer. So basically, I have a way of just getting him, getting him off his ass. Come on, Darren, you got to do this, man. You got to push. You got to push. When you inspire people into action, they make massive moves that not only change their own lives, but they change the people all around the world. Love that. For, for you, man, what's been your biggest struggle and, and is there a way you've handled that? If you haven't, that's cool too. Yeah. So, I mean, I got a lot of struggles, man. I was, <laughs> what do I talk about here? So, I think that one of my biggest struggles is that I'm really hard on myself, you know? Um, of course, being a person who's an achiever, I always want more and I sometimes I don't feel enough, you know? Like, I'm living in my dream house right now. You know, this beautiful house, 10 bedrooms. You know, I thought it would make me happy. It would, it, I've reached enlightenment, but soon after, what's the next goal? You know, I became a self-made millionaire. Okay, once you do that, okay, now you gotta go into the multiple millions to 10 million, 20 million, decade million, you know? With fitness, I was always hard on myself. I would achieve a certain type of physique, but then you need less body fat, more muscle, so I think the biggest lesson that I've learned in myself is the ability to be grateful for where I am and to feel that I'm enough. In fact, that's what I journal. A big part of my journaling process is to journal how I want to feel. And I have like this one page on my journal, I just write, I am enough, I am enough, I am enough. Kind of like Bart Simpson did in the classroom, <laughs> you know? Because I need to drill that in my head to be happy with where I am now and also to aspire to become better. You know, as an achiever, you, you, you sometimes are so hard on yourself, but you don't uh, acknowledge how far you've come. Very cool. What are you reading right now, man? Like, what's, what's the book that you, uh, you've picked up recently? Yes, so the book that I'm reading currently, uh, actually I like to reread books, so it's two. One is The Chimp Paradox. It's a new book and it's about just how everyone has what is called a inner chimp, right? Like the brain has three different segments that evolve over the billions of years. Number one, you have a reptile brain, then you have the, uh, you know, uh, like chimp brain, and then you have the human brain. So a lot of the things that we do are really controlled by our chimp or our subconscious mind. And it's a phenomenal book on retraining your subconscious mind whether you want to make more money or be more disciplined or to be a better person, it's not so much taking actions consciously, but retraining your subconscious mind. So highly recommend that book, getting a lot of insights off of it. And a book that I'm rereading for the 10th time is The Untethered Soul by Michael Singer. And this book is so profound, it's so deep. Every single time I read it or listen to it, I learned something new, you know? And it's the same exact book I've read 10 times, 
but I'm really trying to master it. You know, I believe in mastery. Uh, I was at a time I was reading like 20, 30 books a year. Now I'd rather read the same book, the one that I love, 20 to 30 times. Well, I think that's interesting you mentioned that too because I think I feel like you get such a different insight each time you read a lot of those books. I know for myself, yes. I have those couple books I'll read over and over again, like Atlas Shrug or The Atlas Art of Shrug. War. Or, or things, yeah, things yeah. of that nature. It's Phenomenal. just like you get such a different insight every time. Absolutely, yeah. Because, that, you know, wherever you are in your life, that book is going to speak to you. You know, let's say Untethered yeah. Soul, the first time I read it, you know, that was in a different place in my life. Now it's speaking to me in, in terms of where I am. And like I said, like Atlas Shrug, you know, I need to reread that. That's a big ass book. I think it's like a thousand pages. <laughs> I read that back in like 2007, so it's been over a decade. I, I can't imagine the insights I'll have reading it now. Have, have you read the other the other big book by Ayn Rand, which is The Fountainhead? Fountainhead, I have not. I have not. Have you? If you have, haven't read that one, man, it, it, she wrote it before she wrote Atlas Shrugs, so her writing style is a little bit different. you got to check it out. Cool, cool. I, I will definitely check it out. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, as we're coming down for here for a landing, man, if we're – Looking at your legacy far in the future, and we can sum it up with a quote in your tombstone, what does that look like, man? You know, AJ was a man who did not allow people to settle, right? So I talk about the concept of never settling very often. You know, sometimes they get a lot of hate for it. People get upset. Why, what's wrong with being average? If a person wants to settle, what's wrong with that? Well, it's totally up to you, you know? There's no ideal that everyone has to live up to, but I think everyone knows that they're settling, right? And uh, I, 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 I once interviewed uh, Tony Horn, uh, P90 fame, and he had a phenomenal quote that I wrote in my refrigerator. He says, do your best and forget the rest. And that is so simple because your best is gonna be different in every situation, right? Your individual best, you know in your heart when you're doing your best. So I wanna have people to not settle so they could go to sleep every single night, put their head down and say, you know what? I didn't settle today. I gave my all. I did not let down. It did not play small. So if I could help more people tap into not settling, not playing small, giving all they've got, then that would just give me so much joy to give that to people. You know, it's funny you mentioned that quote, man. Um, episode 116, we had Tony Horton on. That's actually the name of the episode. <laughs> yes, yes. No, listen, man. When Tony Horton talks to you, listen, I'm, I'm so glad you had him on the show as well because that, that one line is so simple, you know, but if you just live by that concept of never settling, always doing your best, you'll have the best life possible. Very cool. Well, AJ, thank you so much for being on the show today. For those people listening, if they want to connect with you, if they want to learn more, where's the best place to go, man? Yeah, super simple, man. My website, onlinesupercoach.com. That's like my main hub. I got everything on there. So I got a lot of free courses on there on really growing a high profit, low stress online business. I got tools on discovering your superpower. Uh, I do a lot of seminars in New York. I did one in LA in uh, January. I actually have them in my house as well. So I would love to have you at a live event. You know, we're here through the internet connecting, but you know, we met at a live event when I was speaking at the Ultimate Stage Experience and man, you're awesome, you're a great person, love your energy, and I would not have connected with you, would not be on your show if I didn't get off my ass and go into that live event in the city. Absolutely, well AJ Mirzad, thank you so much for being on the Create Your Own Life podcast today. Hey Jeremy, thanks for having me. Dude, that